All right, let's jump into this uh, deep dive. We're talking about learning new languages and, you know, maybe ditching the textbooks for a while. We're learning like kids today. Ah, uh, the natural way, right. Always an interesting topic. You got it. I was going through this script, a bilingual one, about unlocking fluency in a year. It all starts with this question, what's the biggest sentence we should learn first in any language? Okay, I see. Hooking us in with a question. Love it. Yeah, it gets you thinking, right? And get this, the guy asking, Dr. Jeff Brown, he speaks six languages already. He's learning Arabic right now, number seven, using this method. Six languages, wow. Okay, he's got my attention. Makes you think, maybe this isn't impossible after all. Exactly. But how is this different from the way we usually try to learn? It's like, hmm, like dissecting a frog versus just watching it hop around. You sent over to Dr. Brown's script. He talks about how most of us, we learn by dissecting the grammar. But that doesn't mean we can actually speak, you know? Okay, yeah, I'm with you. Dissecting versus actually doing it. So how do we move away from the textbook and into actually speaking? Comprehensible input. Think about it. How do babies learn? Just hearing words and phrases around them, understanding, even before they learn all the rules. It's true. They just sort of absorb it all. They're not up all night memorizing verbs. Right. And the research shows that learning this way, like a kid, it helps fluency and how much we remember. A lot. You're really selling me on this whole learning like a child idea. The script mentioned some research and impressive results, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. One study found students who learned this way remembered something like 75% of the vocabulary. The traditional way, only 36%. Big difference. Wow, 75% compared to 36%. Okay, I'm convinced. <laughs> but how do we do that as adults? We can't just revert back to being babies. Well, Dr. Brown, he suggests finding someone to be your language parent. A native speaker who will just talk to you, have conversations, even if you're a total beginner. I like that. Someone who's okay with me just repeating hello over and over again. Exactly. The script actually says you can find them in some unusual places. Family, friends, obviously, but even, believe it or not, Craigslist. Wait, Craigslist. For languages. That's a new one. Okay. But I see your point. Finding someone to actually practice with is key. It is. It's all about being around the language as much as possible. Yeah. Dr. Brown, he even says, you should aim for 99% of your language exposure to be, well, in that language. Ditch English almost entirely. 99%. Okay, that's hardcore. But if it works, I'm in. It sounds intense, but think of it like this. Babies don't take a break from language for 99% oh. of their day, do Okay, you? okay. Immersion. I'm getting it. But what about the stuff we use to learn? Are textbooks totally out the window now? Not really, but think less about grammar rules, more about what kids love. Stories, pictures, anything that makes language, you know, come alive. So like children's books, because I mean, honestly, I'm kind of into that. There you go. The script actually talks about how good they are. Huh. Simple words, fun pictures. It's perfect, comprehensible input. Dr. Brown even talks about using magazines like Sunset Magazine, would you believe? Sunset Magazine, the one with like those beautiful houses and the recipes. That's the one. He says it's got all these great everyday words and the pictures give you the context. You learn without even realizing it, really. That's smart. Okay, so ditch the flashcards, bring on the pictures. What else can we steal from uh, how kids learn? Well, kids, they move around. They're loud. That's where total physical response comes in or TPR. TPR. Okay, gotta be honest. Sounds a bit scary. What is that? It's easy, really, and fun. Mm. Imagine you learn dance by dancing or mm. jump by jumping. You connect the word to doing it. Way easier to remember. Oh, right. It's like language charades. Much better than flashcards. Exactly. Dr. Brown's big on that TPR. Makes it active, engaging, just like for kids. And speaking of games, we forget about those. Games. Okay, now you're talking. But how do we actually use games to learn? Think about when you were a kid. Card games, board games, even charades, like you said. All of those, you can use them for language learning. I can already see it, Spanish charades night. It's like tricking my brain into learning. Exactly. And don't forget online games. Those are good too. Talk to native speakers, practice, and have fun. Win-win, right? I gotta say, this is really eye-opening stuff. Finding a language buddy, going all in on the language, using fun stuff, even games and moving around. It's like endless ways to make this fun. It is, and the best part. You can make it your own. Try things out, be playful. No need to stick to the textbook, you know? You've convinced me. I'm ready to ditch the old ways and bring back my inner child. But before we get too excited, I do have one thing that always trips me up. There are just so many apps and websites for languages now. It's yeah. overwhelming. How do I even start? I know what you mean. It's a lot. But remember what we've been talking about. 
the good ones. They use the same ideas as language acquisition. Okay, makes sense. So I should be looking for the ones that focus on comprehensible input, real conversations, actual practice. Right. But how can I tell which ones are really like that just from their website or app description? It's hard to tell. Look at the words they use. Do they talk about immersive experiences or natural learning or communication focused activities? Those are good signs. But if they're all about advanced grammar modules and extensive vocabulary lists, it might not be the right fit for what we're talking about. So it's about looking past the marketing and finding the ones that are really about actually using the language, right? right? Communicating. Yes. And don't be afraid to try a few before you decide. Lots of them have free trials so you can see if it works for you. Good point. It's easy to get caught up in all the hype. Okay. Now, even with the perfect app and all the motivation in the world, I think it's super important to have like realistic expectations. For sure. Language learning, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It takes time, effort, and a good amount of patience. Okay, so how do I set goals that will keep me going, but also you know, not make me feel like I'm failing if I'm not fluent tomorrow? Start with your why. Why are you learning this language? What do you want to be able to do? Are you dreaming of ordering a perfect cappuccino in Italy? Bargaining for spices in Morocco? Or just talking to your family in their language. Funny you should say that. I've always wanted to be able to talk to my grandparents in their native language. It'd be amazing to connect with that part of my family history. That's wonderful. And it shows how powerful language is connecting with people, with cultures. Once you know your why, you can set SMART goals. SMART goals. I've heard of those. It's all about breaking things down into smaller steps. Yeah. Right? Like, instead of just, I want to be fluent in Italian, I could say, I want to have a simple conversation with my Nana about her childhood in six months. There you go. That's a smart, goal-specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. It's about those little wins that keep you motivated. That makes so much sense. It's about progress, not being perfect right away, and enjoying the process. You got it. And remember, you're building a skill. It takes time. Be kind to yourself. Mistakes are how we learn. And celebrate every win, even the small ones. This is all so encouraging. But before we wrap up this amazing deep dive, I do have one last question. We've talked a lot about speaking and listening, but what about reading and writing? Does this whole acquisition thing work for that too? That's a great question. It's something a lot of people wonder about. Our deep dive today has mostly been about spoken language, but there are definitely connections to reading and writing. Interesting. So how does this acquisition approach apply to reading and writing? It's similar to spoken language. Start with comprehensible input things you find interesting that are just a little bit above your level. Don't start with a really difficult novel or textbook. Try children's books, graded readers, even comic books. Pictures can really help you understand. So just like with speaking, you gradually increase the difficulty as you learn more. It sounds like finding interesting materials is important for both. Exactly. And remember what we said about immersion. Surround yourself with the written language. Read signs, menus, websites, blog posts, whatever you find interesting. The more you see the language, the more natural it will become. It's all about making it a part of your life, both spoken and written. What about actually writing? How can we do that in an acquisition way? Find real reasons to write, just like you would with speaking. Don't worry about grammar drills and boring exercises. Try keeping a journal, writing emails to your language partner, even writing little stories. So it's about expressing yourself creatively, right? Even if it's not perfect at first, and you improve over time with practice. Exactly. Language is alive. It's not just about rules in a book. It's about communication and connection. So enjoy the journey, be brave, and most importantly, have fun with it. This has been an incredible conversation. You've given me a whole new way of looking at learning languages. But before we get too carried away with all the possibilities, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking about technology and language acquisition. Is it a helpful tool or a distraction? Stay tuned to find out. It really makes you rethink things, doesn't it? It does. We forget sometimes. We're kind of hardwired for this stuff. Unlocking that, it can be pretty amazing. Totally. Now, right before the break, we were about to get into technology and language learning. It's tricky, right? There's so many apps and websites, which is great, but also distracting. You've got it. It's all about finding that balance. Tech can be great, but you don't want to rely on it too much. Okay, so are we throwing out our language apps then? Not exactly. Think of them like, hmm, spices. They add something, but they're not the whole meal. Apps are good for vocab, maybe some grammar, even chatting with people online. But that's not all language learning is. Right, it's got to be more than just the apps. So how do we use technology the right way without getting sucked in? 
Use it to immerse yourself even outside of lessons. Watch movies, listen to podcasts, find online communities. There's so much out there. I love that. It reminds me that language is more than just textbooks. It's about connecting with people, with cultures. Speaking of connecting, what about music? Can that help? Absolutely. Music is its own language, right? Listening to songs, it's a great way to pick up words, how the language flows, even your accent. Plus, it's fun. Totally. I've definitely caught myself singing along to songs in other languages, even if I don't get all the words. The music makes it stick in your head. It does. And don't just listen, sing along. Even if you're not perfect, it helps. Like another way to trick my brain into learning. I'm all for it. And of course, we can't talk about technology without talking about social media. It's everywhere. Good and bad, I guess, for languages. Social media. It can be really good if you use it right. Instead of just scrolling and scrolling, find accounts and groups that are about languages. Follow people who post in your target language, join groups, maybe even start your own language exchange thing. It's like creating your own little online language world. That's awesome. And you can connect with native speakers, practice, and it feels natural, fun. Exactly. It's all about making it a part of your life in a way you enjoy. This has been incredible. It's not just about the rules of language learning, is it? It's bigger than that. You got it. It's about enjoying the journey, those small wins, yeah. connecting with people and cultures. Well said. Thank you so much for all of this. I know our listeners are going to get so much out of it. It's been a pleasure. And hey, remember, the most important phrase you can learn, the one that starts a conversation, sparks your curiosity. That's what keeps you learning. So true. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive into language acquisition. Until next time, everyone, keep learning.